All right, hey, Marine Repair. So uh, we're moving on. We're going to move into our next uh, assignment here, which is going to be looking at outboard motor service and maintenance. And so um, this is going to be a little bit of a hands-on uh, well, video by me and then a little bit of theory work by you guys. So I just got this brand new book that's all about marine service technician training. It's very current and modern, and so we're going to be using that a little bit to help understand what goes through uh, the maintenance of uh, some of the most common outboards. What I've done is I've actually uh, brought out one of there it is right there uh, our brand new outboards that I was supposed to open up with you guys this year which would have been super exciting it's a brand new Yamaha 9.9 .9, um, that was uh, donated to us by Yamaha they kind of sponsored us this year which was really cool and they also donated a uh, Yamaha 90 2017 and a Yamaha 25 so when we get back in the shop we'll be able to work with some of those ones so uh, we're gonna unbox this one here and check out what a brand new motor out of the box looks like check out what's in the service manual and uh, what we need to get going on to uh, to break this thing in I don't even have an engine stand for this, so I might end up having to build one, so there'll be a little tutorial on that. And uh, we might as well get to unboxing this thing and uh, check it out. It's going to be pretty sweet. Here she is, new in the box. Let's uh, get to some scraps and we'll cut this sucker open. See, uh, see what's inside. Big reveal. Okay, here we are. One brand new Yamaha 9.9 .9 short shaft tiller steer 2019 model. We're gonna get into uh, checking out this whole thing here. So I'm gonna look at some of the uh, the uh, engine mounts first. Make sure I know how I need to build my stand for this one. And uh, let's a little, look a little closer. We'll get some of this plastic off. All right, unboxing it a little bit more. I uh, found some important things. First of all, owner's manual. So this is gonna go through our break-in procedure on this engine. We also have um, our fuel line and, uh, and pumper bulb to uh, prime the fuel. And there's a couple important notes right on the motor. First and foremost, fill engine oil. This is a four stroke 9.9. .9, and so uh, we'll be uh, needing to fill up that engine oil. And this is a uh, newer version with a low emission um, Yamaha outboard. So a little bit friendlier for the environment than some of the, uh, the previous generations and of course a lot better for the environment than uh, the two stroke variety of this one. So we're going to stop here. Uh, we'll be getting uh, our Yamalube 10W30 ready to go to uh, top this one up and uh, we'll put together a quick stand here so I can get this thing on the stand and we'll look at uh, breaking it in and ultimately uh, firing it up which will be pretty cool and then we'll go through some of the uh, the service on uh, on an engine like this. Okay so as mentioned um, I've got a new book that we're going to be working with on this project a little bit. This is uh, the fundamentals of marine service technology and this is a great book that shows all sorts of aspects of uh, what you might need to know if you're going to become a uh, marine service technician. This is put out by the ABYC, that's the American Boat and Yacht Council and they set the standard for uh, how boats are worked on and what requirements there need to be to make sure things are safe such as how propane lockers need to be set up or how fuel fittings need to be set up, how outboards need to be set up. And so this is a good introductory to this. Now most modern trades will have some sort of a learning book like this that uh, protective or potential students need to go through. And uh, sometimes a little bit of reading, lots of good diagrams. And so what I've done is I've taken uh, some PDF files or I've making snapshots of all of these pages specifically for, uh, for this project on things that we need to be looking at in terms of outboard service. It can be a little overwhelming, but there are some great photos in here. There is some text, but um, if you're gonna be moving forward with uh, post-secondary education anytime, whether it's university or trade school, you need to learn how to learn and how to get through going through some of these um, these texts. It can be a little time consuming, but we break it down into certain components so it's not that overwhelming and it just takes a little bit of time to get through and paying attention. At the end of these chapters there are questions and I'm going to have you guys answer some of these and I will be adding my own questions as I seem fit as well to, uh, to each of these chapters. Obviously I'd love for you guys to be working hands-on with these outboards but that's not, uh, not able to happen at this time so in the near future hopefully we will. There it is, a nice looking unit. I got it temporarily mounted up on a uh, block of 2x4 that's uh, put into my 
woodwork vise, so I'm able to have a good look at it. Uh, on looking in the back of the manual, it came with a uh, nice spark plug wrench, an extra pull cord for emergencies in case the other one breaks, which is a good idea to carry with you if you're out in the water. And then I was just checking out our fuel line and I got it so it'll set up to, um, to a fuel tank as well, so we'll be able to test this thing out. If we get involved here, we can uh, actually open up the back cover and lift off the cowling. And we can see inside uh, the top of the outboard here, it is brand spanking new, not any corrosion whatsoever, which is great. Actually, it looks like a lot of the linkage and stuff is in a protective bag with uh, some lubrication in there. We can see there's an oil dipstick to test the oil. We've got our oil fill here on the back in yellow. There are spark plugs and spark plug caps in orange and a bunch of our electrical and whatnot as well. So we'll be going through some of the service on this thing in a little bit more detail. We'll be looking at how to change spark plugs, checking and filling the engine oil itself. Again, this is a four stroke. A two stroke would have uh, the engine oil usually pre-mixed in the fuel, or sometimes there'll be an auxiliary oil pump that pumps in two stroke oil to, uh, to burn in the internal combustion engine. We're also gonna be looking at the lower unit, that's the leg down here, it's hanging out at the bottom, and we'll be uh, learning how to change the gear oil and uh, essentially the, uh, the transmission of this motor so that we'll be able to shift smoothly from forward to neutral and reverse. Again, an outboard is only two speed. There's actually no gears whatsoever other than forward and reverse, just like all marine engines. We're gonna investigate the prop a little bit. We'll be checking out our rubber bushing inside, make sure that's okay, and uh, give you guys some idea, uh, ideas on how to service uh, propeller and propeller shaft if an engine had been uh, out, in, uh, out in use. So we'll uh, come back to this in a little bit more detail, maybe build another stand. We'll do uh, pre-maintenance uh, setup and we'll run the engine All for right, a little bit. So we've uh, checked out the outboard a little bit and now we're gonna move on to uh, adding our engine oil because this is again a brand new out of the box uh, motor and they don't come uh, filled with engine oil uh, during transportation. This one did come filled with gear oil, however. So in the leg, the lower unit, as shown before at the bottom, that does have uh, some, some gear oil in it, so we don't have to worry about that one quite yet. But uh, let's go over the, the things we're gonna need to uh, fill up our, uh, our engine oil. All right, so I spent a bit of time looking at our uh, service manual that came with the motor, and it recommends a certain type of engine oil. And for fact, this one is Yamalube uh, 10W30. And in the manual and also right on the top of the engine, it says exactly what type and how much we need. We need 0.8 of a liter, 800 milliliters, and again, recommend a 10W30 to 10W40 for this model. So we're gonna be filling it here, and I've uh, got myself a funnel. I clean this thing out to make sure there's no dust or debris on it. There actually was, because I use this for a bunch of things. Uh, I actually also have myself a measuring cup. I like to measure things fairly accurately when doing this. So I'm gonna do a couple of uh, rounds up to 200 mils and start to fill it up. Got myself a crescent wrench, you'll see why in a second. And we also got over here our uh, dipstick or oil checker. So we're gonna be able to uh, double check that we have filled the engine to uh, its correct capacity. We don't wanna to have too little, we don't wanna have too much. And if we did put in too much, there's a few ways to remove excess engine oil. There is a drain for the engine oil right here. This can work, but it can be a bit messy because it can leak everywhere. And so manufacturers actually recommend that we pump oil out during an oil change on this one. I don't have that tool here. I do have it at the school. It looks like this and this little oil changer pump can fit right in where the dipstick goes. So you put a little tube down here and we can pump out that engine oil if we need to do an oil change in the future. This engine oil here that we're gonna put in is gonna be good for the first 20 hours of service life on this motor and then it'll need to be changed to check for uh, normal engine wear. And um, we'll do that when the time comes. For now, let's get things set up and uh, we'll start measuring out some engine oil. All right, so we're gonna remove the engine oil cap. I did this a little earlier and it was really, really stuck, sticky and tight. So if you ever have a tight filler cap, a simple crescent wrench slides on nice and easily and it gives you a little bit more leverage to open this thing up. So we're gonna unscrew this one and I'm gonna use a funnel to uh, fill the engine oil. Very important during this process 
that the engine is straight up and down and level. If it's on an angle or anything like that, you're not gonna get the correct uh, reading when you go to check your engine oil. A little funnel here, I'm gonna have to uh, put this on pause while I hold this and top it up. So uh, we'll check it out when I'm uh, filled up and we'll look at the dipstick. There's the first 200 milliliters gonna go in, so I'm gonna do this four times. Total of 800 milliliters go on into the motor. Okay, we've added our 800 milliliters of oil. I'm gonna put the filler cap back in here and do this up snug. Make sure there's no dirt or anything on that. And don't over tighten because these can be hard to get undone. Just good and snug is all you need. Finger tight. Now that the oil's settled, we're gonna check our dipstick. The dipstick was already cleaned beforehand. And so what we're gonna be looking for here is indications on our markings right here. If it is below the bottom of the X's, it's too low. If it's above the top, it's too high. We want it to be coming right up to the end of these things for a full, um, full oil capacity. So we're gonna reinsert this one down inside the motor. And we need to make sure that this gets pushed down nice and snug inside the motor for the correct reading. So we're gonna actually push it and pop it right down in so it's fully seated, and then we remove it. We're gonna have a careful look. And there's our reading. We are, it's hard to see on my phone, right at the very top. So we're at the exact correct oil location. We can double check this too. Engine oil is filled up, and I've gone ahead and removed this fill engine oil sticker from the uh, tiller arm because that's done. We're ready to start the engine and give it a try. Uh, we've got to hook up some water here, so I'm going to fill a bucket and uh, we'll maybe modify the stand so we can actually run this. I'm not going to run it indoors because that would be dangerous because of carbon monoxide poisoning. And uh, we're going to check a few things. After it starts running, we're going to check for any oil leaks. So we'll probably leave the cowling off. We'll have a good look around the powerhead unit, make sure there's no oil leaking anywhere. And this model is actually equipped with a little oil indicator light might be hard to see here but if this starts flashing it means we have low oil pressure and we don't want to run the motor so if that turns on we're going to shut it down immediately and try and diagnose what the problem would be hopefully we don't have that issue